Hey, Heights Church, Pastor Justin here, and we are in this whole Passion Devo series of leading into the death and the resurrection of Jesus, and I love this series, and I actually get to share with you probably my favorite story that happens to Jesus and around Jesus through this whole season of the Passion Week, and it it's out of John chapter 12. Let me read it to you and then share some thoughts, some insights that I have about this story for you. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany at the home of Lazarus, the man that he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him at the table. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of an expensive perfume made of the essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. The whole house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who soon betrayed him, said this perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor because he was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole from it for himself. Jesus said, replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. As I think about this story, you read it also in the book of Luke and the book of Matthew, where Jesus recounts the different details of what happened around this. Some say that G Mary came in weeping at his feet and anointed his head. He, When you anoint a body for burial, you actually anoint the whole person. And there's a couple observations about this that I love about this story is that Mary was paying attention. See, Jesus had been telling the disciples, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to die. They're going to crucify me. They're going to capture me. They're going to arrest me. They're going to put me on trial and I'm going to die. And all of the disciples kept saying, no, it's not going to happen. They, they were like in this denial of the truth. But what we see in this story is that Mary was paying attention. See, Mary believed Jesus because you know, some of the stories say that, that Jesus had driven seven evil spirits out of her. She had been rescued, redeemed, and transformed by his presence. And so she had this just beautiful, deep level of trust for everything that Jesus said. And so she, she brings this gift. And it's not just any gift. This is an extravagant gift. And I don't mean just extravagant, like, oh, it was really generous of him. No, no, no. This was a big deal for a couple of reasons. One, the first thing that this was, it was, it was worth a year's wages, which is a significant amount of money. I mean, think about it. If you took something that was worth a year of your wages and poured it over the top of someone, like there's no getting it back. There's no reusing that. It's, it is gone for that purpose in that moment. This perfume was that was that extravagant of a gift. And it was probably Mary's dowry. See, in that time, in that culture, spouses and, and women would bring something to the marriage as, as, as a part of their resources of starting this new family. This gift was probably that in her life. She gave that to Jesus as an expression of just his, her love and her gratitude to him for all that he'd done for her. The other thing I love about this is that Jesus says, you know, leave her alone. Like she did this to prepare me for my burial. Like he knew what was coming and he knew that she was gonna be honored for it for the rest of her life. See, I, I love this for a couple reasons. I, I love that Mary received such a beautiful level of forgiveness that her response was one of worship and extravagant worship. See, I step into Easter and I can't help but think about the fact that, you know, Jesus has forgiven us and forgiven me so much of the stuff that I've struggled with in my life. This sacrifice that he made sets me free from the guilt and from the shame and all the emotion that you see is actually gratitude because I am free and I am forgiven and so are you. And then the best part is that on Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead and one of the first people he saw was Mary, was Mary and Martha. They were the first ones to see him after he was raised from the dead. 
They were the ones who believed that he was going to. They prepared him for this, and then they got to be the first ones to witness it. My encouragement to you as you are preparing for Easter week in the busyness that is all of our lives, that you would pause and take some time to reflect on the extravagance of God's mercy and his forgiveness to us, and just take some time in worship to say thank you. Like Martha did, just do something extravagant maybe for someone else. Do something in different that you would in a way that you sit with Jesus and you prepare your heart for Easter in a, in a new way. Because maybe we need to pay attention to what Jesus has been saying to us and not just the details of life around us. Thanks so much for joining me, Heights Church. God bless you. See you next time.